Hi, everybody. It's Dawn Mitchell, and welcome to Dawn of Sports. This week, Jim and I have a great guest, and if you are a soccer fan, if you have not been paying attention to the Gopher women's soccer team, you are missing out. They're having their best start since 2008. We have their head coach, Erin Chastain. She's a former Gopher, three-year captain, was on a Big Ten championship team, so we have a great conversation coming up. Yes, this is Dawn of Sports. She's Dawn Mitchell from Fox 9. I'm Jim Suhan from the Star Tribune. This is our show at talknorth.com. Best way to listen to this show or any of our many shows at the network. Please subscribe to your favorite podcast app. It's free. It's easy. Uh, you should know the lineup by now. Russo, LaPanta, Gorg, Roy Smalley, Lavelle E. Neal III, Jeff Diamond, John Krasinski, John Millay, Randy Shaver's new high school football show, uh, Mike Grimm on the Gophers, outdoor content. Check it all out. We do appreciate it. We keep growing, and we grow because of you and because of our sponsors. And we do want to thank uh, – we're coming to you from the Aquarius Home Services Studios. We want to thank Rudy Luther Toyota, Minnesota Masonic Charities, and Natrium. We'll tell you more about them later. Don, uh, yeah, we have a good conversation with Aaron Chastain coming up. Uh, that, uh, we've already recorded it, so we know it's good. It'll be a lot. Of, it's going to be a lot of fun for people to listen to. Today, uh, I want to talk about the Vikings and the Lynx. Let's start with the Vikings. You and I both cover the Vikings a lot and have been doing so for many years. They're 2-0, and and what the only thing better than being 2-0 for, for the Vikings right now is the fact that both games have been impressive. They yes, it's how the they're 2-0. Apart, I, and then I they agree. beat a very good 49ers team. Yes, and I don't want to say I was surprised they beat the 49ers. And like I've always said on, on, yeah. on our podcast, I – I wait till game number three and I've already been like, wow, they play even more synergistically, if I can use that word, than I thought that they would. Um, and so I've been impressed because it's defense, offense and special teams. Um, albeit, let's forget like the first three minutes of the first quarter against the Giants. Okay. That's just like getting the kinks out, but especially so Jim, um, how the Vikings defense handled San Francisco. And, and I agree with Kevin O'Connell yesterday. He said, not only was I, uh, impressed with the fact that they were containing them, but they were still flying in the fourth. So they're conditioning and they're ready for it. B flow has that defense just humming and then on offense when you see guys like Jalen Naylor like sacrificing the body blocking also um, catching footballs and you know even with Justin Jefferson out and then you got Aaron Jones and the O-line really giving Sam Darnold time um, there's just so many things to pick apart that I've been impressed I don't know about you yeah and I really think what you're seeing is the brain trust kind of going to work here. Uh, Quessy had a, we all know Quessy, his first two draft picks as Vikings general manager were horrendous. And he's admitted that. Really, since then, he's done a really nice job of roster building. O'Connell is now showing that, you know, you give him a quarterback who has some, any talent at all, and he's going to find something that works. And Brian Flores, I thought last year he did really well with an undermanned defense. And now this offseason, you lose to Neil Hunter your best defender, your best pass rusher, your only really top-notch pass rusher, and the pass rush is better this year. Why? Well, I think Brian Flores likes having a bunch of players who can who can fill that role. Instead of relying on just one person uh, and one person that the offense can double team and identify and take out of try to take out of the game. Now between Van Ginkle, Grenard, uh, Dallas Turner, Cashman, uh, Patrick Jones, you know, they built enough depth that they can play the way Brian Flores wants to play. You know, and, and we also have to give out uh, a shout to Stefan Gilmore, who came in at the last minute and has just kind of seamlessly kind of gone in with that defense. So you get guys that, A, know what they're doing, they're savvy, and they're excited by B Flo's defense. And the fact, like you said, they're very versatile. And they can kind of get off the ball. But Pat Jones did say, hey, listen, this is my second year in the system. And this is why he has four sacks in two games. And I call him the silent assassin, right? Because he just kind of smiles and goes about it and does it. And he just said, "It." I give credit to my teammates. But now that I'm in my second year with B-Flow, it really helps me. So 
I think maybe the veterans coming in, they already, they've already been in may, sometimes a couple of different defensive systems. Um, they, they like it. They love this challenge. They like being versatile. And they're fast. And I'm, I've been really enjoying it. And let's keep our fingers crossed that Dallas Turner's knee is okay because I've been really impressed with how he, as a rookie, has just fit in with this defense. And Gilmore, is that's a really important name to bring up here. And by the way, I want to point out that people on this podcast network frequently tell the teams what to do, and when the teams listen to us, they do very well. Jeff Diamond <laughs> and I were saying for four months they needed Stephon Gilmore. They finally bring him in. And I think that's maybe the biggest change in this roster from last year's roster. Last year – they were trying to get something out of Booth. They were trying to get something out of a Caleb Evans. They were trying. They, they were trying every young player they had on the roster, trying to get them to play like NFL cornerbacks. And by the end of the year, it wasn't working. Uh, they just ran out. They, they weren't good enough. This year, uh, between Gilmore and Shaq Griffin coming in, now all of a sudden you have three veteran cornerbacks who can play almost all your cornerback snaps. With Josh Metellus being kind of a hybrid safety cornerback, now all of a sudden. You have all veterans playing. You know, the, the rookie, the kids only get on the, the field in blowout situations or because of injuries. It's completely, completely changed the way this defense plays. Absolutely. And, the, you know, you talk about veterans and Harrison Smith joked around like after that first game and goes, you know, a younger me against the Giants would have taken his interception to the house or at least tried. <laughs> um, but he likes to make fun of himself but they're still playing at a high motor level. So you take all of these veterans with all of the football IQ, all of that talent, and they're still playing at like a high motor level. It's just, it's awesome to see. And I also like that they go after them. Like there's maybe one time where you're like, hey, come on, can you give a little more pressure? Um, but that was because someone had just gone out. But I love the high quality of the effort, the pressures, the the movement of, of seeing how B flow is interchanging people and moving them around. Um, for me, it's been exciting to watch. And it seems that the players love that too. So when the players are energized like little kids and, and they're enjoying it, that's a really great sign. By the way, if you like uh, Vikings coverage, we have two Vikings shows on the network. We have Jeff Diamond's Vikings and NFL Insider with the former Vikings general manager I've known for 35 years. And we have uh, the Viking Update show, myself and John Krasinski taking a writer's view of this. And I said this on the Viking Update show this week. You know, one of the things I appreciate, even when they were losing, that last year was a rough year for them. I appreciate the vibe around the organization these days. I've covered a lot of Vikings teams where you really didn't want to talk to the players. You really yeah. didn't want to be in the locker room. You really didn't want to deal with these people. You know, you just kind of did what you had to do. Uh, it's a, you know, and we've seen this reflected in the players association surveys. They, everybody likes playing for the Vikings. There's a good atmosphere around the place. O'Connell treats people well. Quessy treats people well. The Wilfs treat people well. And so it's, it's, when they win, you know, it's not the, oh, we're going to we're gonna put our fingers in your face and tell you you're wrong. They just enjoy winning, which makes right. it a lot of fun to be around them. Right. I really, I really do enjoy, you know, and what I do enjoy too is um, on the offensive side of the ball, um, we all knew that Justin Jefferson was going to come out and, and play well. And we're, we're hoping that um, that thigh contusion is okay. But when you have someone that kind of buys in and they're a pleasure and then you and they come in like sam darnold you know like ever how to handle that situation like i'm coming in here but i know that you guys have a draft pick and and then just kind of getting to work and then having justin say like hey just trust my double team trust my double team and just to see the confidence that Sam has quietly, but just to see how the team is behind him. Uh, I've really enjoyed that. And I've enjoyed seeing Aaron Jones kind of step in there and just change the game. And then you get guys like CJ Ham, that's like a linebacker out there on special teams. Like, you know, just say, all right, I'll do whatever it takes. Like he said, he goes, I'm still on the team. I'm going to take whatever it takes to do anything for this team. That's that mentality that um, the players have that trickles down from what you just mentioned about management and head coaching. You know, it, it's it's hard to get that mentality that 
the bra- top brass has um, for the players to have it as well. And they do. I think that's the thing, Jim, right? On to another winning story. Uh, the Minnesota Lynx have – I'm more surprised that the Lynx are about to lock up the number second seed, it looks like, oh, in the so WNBA good. than I am the Vikings are 2-0. and oh. Uh, the, the Lynx are coming off two losing seasons. They don't bring any stars in. They barely are playing their last two number one draft picks, and they're going to be the second seed. And they just went and beat the number one seed on the road. Uh, I'm blown away by what they're doing, and it is it is the essence of coaching. Uh, I think this is Cheryl Reeves' best coaching job ever. This is someone who was already going to go into the Hall of Fame no matter what happened this year. Uh, I think this is her best coaching job ever. She's, she has one – potential Hall of Famer on her roster. Her championship teams had four or five, and she's winning at the same rate as the championship teams this year. Yeah, and what I love is how they're playing as a team. It, you know, we all know Nafisa Collier, but Alana Smith, Courtney Williams, uh, Kayla McBride, you just kind of go down the list. And then you you quietly see like, maybe all three of them will have a double double on a given night and in, in, in different categories. One will have it for, you know, points and rebounds. One will have a points and assists, but it's the unselfishness of this team and doing what needs to be done. And just, I think they've won like six in a row now. Um, and just to see how they're playing as a team, like you said, like Cheryl Reeve and company for this coaching staff has this team just at a, as they like to say now, a higher vibration, Jim. They're like, they're vibrating high. Like I, I say what you will, I think that they can go in and win this whole thing. Well, I didn't think so until recently, uh, but going on this winning streak, getting healthy and then winning at New York, you know, they match up pretty well for New York. And they, they have not beaten, you know, we're talking here on Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday morning. Uh, they're going to play at Connecticut on Tuesday night. This podcast is not going to reflect what happens in that game. But, you know, they lost close to Connecticut early in the season. And the second loss to Connecticut was when the FISA Collier went out with an injury. So we don't know how they really match up with Connecticut. Uh, but they're set up. They, it, I, I could see them being in the finals. And if they're in the finals, they might be up against a team that they can handle. And and what I've liked in some of the games too, right, is um, yes, they just do everything. The passing has been crisp. They're great in the transition, but when they need it and they can fire some threes off, they can just keep firing threes and now, but they don't rely on it. You know, some teams like live or die by the three. It's almost like, okay, we've worn you down by playing like smart and dribbling and, and, and good defense and rebounding. And now we're going to drain some threes on you. And that's when I'm like, yes, especially late in the game. I'm like, okay, they're, they're putting, it's that killer mentality of just kind of putting their foot on the neck and um, and going for it that I really enjoy. Yeah, it's been a blast. Uh, congratulations to them. I hope we make a, a long run. That would be great for them. It would be great for women's sports. Uh, so it, I'm looking forward to the playoffs with them. Uh, let's get to our conversation with Aaron Chastain. We want to remind you we're coming from the Aquarius Home Services Studios, and we want to thank longtime sponsor, longtime supporter of women's sports, Rudy Luther Toyota. Ready for a women-forward car dealership? Rudy Luther Toyota empowers their many women on staff in sales, management, and service. Whether you are looking for a new Toyota or pre-owned vehicle, Rudy Luther Toyota has something for everyone. Every vehicle comes with a Luther Advantage. Ten cents off fuel and car wash discounts at holiday stations, Luther Advantage warranty, and five-day return policy on pre-owned vehicles. Located just five minutes west of downtown Minneapolis, off 394 and General Mills Boulevard. And they're also hiring. Want to join the team but don't know where to start? Visit RudyLutherToyota.com today. We'd also like to thank Minnesota Masonic Charities. When people think of the Freemasons, they often think of secret handshakes and unusual hats. And of course, the pancake breakfast. Minnesota Masonic Charities would prefer that you think about the work that they do right here in our community. Places like the Masonic Cancer Center at the University of Minnesota or the Masonic Children's Hospital and the Masonic Home in Bloomington. They are just a few examples of the important work that the Freemasons support here in Minnesota. As part of the largest fraternal organization in the world, Masons have consistently answered the call when it comes to charitable needs. I am happy 
that Minnesota Masonic Charities has chosen Minnesota Bound and this podcast as a place to help spread the word. We look forward to learning so much more about their many programs here in the weeks to come. Finally, we'd like to thank a company that I started uh, buying their products long before we ever talked to them about uh, joining in as a sponsor on this network. I've been using their stuff for years. Natrium, natrium natrium.com, N-A-T-R-E-U-M. Go online, order delivery, find out where their locations are. I have two very close to me. There are also wildflower locations that are basically the same thing as Natrium. So they're all over the place. They have a, a, Their mothership store is in St. Louis Park, but they, I guarantee they have a place near you somewhere in the Twin Cities. Uh, they have bombs that are antifungal, anti-infectious, antibacterial, anti-inflammatory, help with muscle pain, arthritis, tendinitis, uh, pain relief as quickly as 15 minutes. You can apply it three times a day. They have oil. It's good for your guts. Uh, I know what I've discovered later in life that ever that gut health is pri- might be the most important health. They have oils that can help with that. They can help with headaches and migraines. Uh, they have stuff for, for pleasure. You know, they have stuff that just gives you a nice little buzz, whether it's uh, drinks or gummies or dips. Uh, and they also have, you know, gummies that are good for headaches. They have gummies that are good for, for sleep aids. My wife uses it for sleep. I use it for sometimes for relaxation. They also taste good. They just have so many different products. You're going to be able to find something you like that fits what you want and your lifestyle. Natrium, natrium natrium.com, N-A-T-R-E-U-M. Now, on to Don's conversation with Aaron Chastain. Go for soccer. Well, I'm really excited for our next guest, Jim, because I am a former soccer player, so I always keep my eye on the prize, and I quite frankly think they don't get enough love. So Aaron Chastain, the head coach of the Gopher women's soccer team, they're off to their best start since 2008. And Aaron herself is closing in on a huge milestone. Next up, her next victory will be 150 wins as her head coach. Aaron Chastain, thank you for joining us on Dawn of Sports. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate the, the coverage of women's soccer. And you know what, as I said earlier, I am a soccer player. Uh, Jim and I always support whatever we can, if it's Minnesota Aurora or the soccer team. So when you have such great, not only young women, but great players, and they're they're really showing up this year um, off to, like we said, the best year since 2008, basically. What can you say first collectively about this group of young women as women in addition to athletes? Yeah, I I mean, they're an exceptional group, really. We felt like uh, we had a wonderful offseason with this group and then added some real some real talent to our team in the offseason, whether that's from the transfer market or incoming freshmen and um, so we were we were really excited about the group group's potential, and they've really just come together on and off the field. And obviously, we have a lot of momentum right now, which we felt would be important going into a really challenging Big Ten season. So, um, but certainly we we love the group. I think we have veteran players that are really performing at a high level and trying to leave their legacy at Minnesota, and that's really fun to see. And for you, being a former gopher yourself, when you took over the reins a couple of years ago, first, it, it, that's kind of like a dream come true for, for many coaches to be able to coach at their alma mater. And when you first got in there, what were, what were your, um, your thoughts when you're like, oh, I get to do this and take over my old team? Yeah, you know, I I feel really fortunate to be at Minnesota. I had such a wonderful experience as a student athlete at Minnesota playing for the Gophers and I'm from Minnesota. So for a lot of reasons, this was my dream job and you're never quite sure if you're gonna get your opportunity to to get your dream job. So when it came open, it was just a, a huge blessing for me and my family. And um, once I got here, I think driving to work every day, I just would look at the skyline and say, I can't believe this is where I am. So really, really excited to be here still several years later and really excited about the work we've put into our program to to have the right student athlete from a character perspective, from an academic perspective and an athletic perspective representing our program on a daily basis. It's It's been really, really rewarding for me to be here. Before we get into some of the girls that are on your team, I want to give you your own flowers um, because you are no slouch. Three-year captain, you are also um, 
on the uh, the team back in 1995 that won the championship, the Big Ten championship. Um, back then it wasn't Big Ten, but um, h- how is that to kind of walk in there w- w- with the kudos? Because, you know, young, young players, they want to look up to someone that A, has played the game, B, has been to a high level. Um, what do you remember from your playing days that kind of gives you some street cred, you know, when, when yeah. you're coaching these girls? <laughs> yeah, I I mean, I, I obviously remember a lot from my playing days. We had a wonderful coach. We had a great program. We won the Big Ten, as you said, in 1995. Um, went to a couple NCAA tournaments and and really had a, a wonderful group of young women in, a, in the program. And so I think, I don't know if it gives me credibility, but I certainly <laughs> know that our, our team knows how much I love this place and how I want our program to be competing for Big Ten championships. And I so I think from that perspective, they know the passion and energy I'm going to bring every day to to try to help us reach our potential and and achieve our goals. When you already have 149 wins as a head coach, does it come fast? Uh, you know, like I always, when I talk to some other athletes and, and and they either follow or don't follow their own stats, some of them are really surprised. Like, oh, oh, okay. Um, how are you in that department? Did you say, oh my goodness, 149 already? Or or how do you follow those? Well, I did when you said that right when you started because I, I didn't know that. and And that actually is not something I track. I think I'm more about how is our team on on any given year i would say the losses go slowly and the wins are fast so um you know i i i don't know i don't i don't i don't really follow that i i guess i'm more concerned with hey our next game is michigan and let's try to get a w well, you also have a star, uh, uh, first of all, a lot of great players and some of them that I know already, but Kaya Harper has just really been showing up on the national scene this year and, of course, leading the Big Ten in numerous categories. Um, but from what I hear, she's also just such a great teammate and leader. Uh, what can you speak to, first of all, her leadership skills before her soccer skills? Yeah, um, well, Ka- Kaya is a senior in our program and I think I was talking to someone about her this past spring was actually her first off season training with our team because due to injury, she has really been unavailable in all of our off seasons, which is a huge chunk of time from January through May. And so she had a couple different surgeries. And so I think has a nice perspective of, Hey, I'm healthy and I'm really appreciating this opportunity every day to get out there and compete. Um, And in terms of leadership, I'm, I mean, I think she relishes the big moments and isn't doesn't shy away from those. So I think from that perspective has been a good leader for our team. She really wants to win. And I know our team feels that every day at training. So she sets a nice tone of competitiveness at training every day and obviously has then from a performance perspective played really well for us. And so I think when you when you get it done on game day, that always um almost always equates to like, hey, I'm trying to lead my team in the right direction. Well, especially like you said, in years past when injuries have prevented her, I know mentally, you know, injuries can just weigh down a player. So it's almost like she's broken free uh, mentally and emotionally then on the field, it sounds like. Yeah, absolutely. And again, I think sometimes you can see this. I've, I've been coaching for a while and when players get to their senior year and they recognize like, hey, this this is coming near the end, they can mm-hmm. find a whole new level of success um, and freedom. And, and I think she has done that. And I'm excited to see what she can continue to do through the rest of the season. And uh, just to give people stats, if they're listening and they don't know, Harper, uh, she leads the Big Ten. She's first in the Big Ten in game-winning goals, goals and total points, and also second in the nation with game-winning goals, third in the nation with goals and total points. So um, big kudos to her, especially, like you said, coming back um, from injury and then kind of getting into it, especially your senior year. You know, yeah, you're running for glory at this point, right, Aaron? Yes. Aaron, I think uh, you and I were in the same audience when Brianna Scurry came through during her her uh, tour in, in support of her book. Uh, just t- take us through some of your connections to that that world of soccer. Oh, to the U.S. team? Yeah. Um, well, gosh, I can remember the U.S. winning the 99 World Cup. I was in my friend's wedding and we were trying to delay walking out for her wedding for the so we could watch the penalty kick shootout. 
Um, and obviously little did I know then that uh, Brandy Chastain, who kicked the winning um, penalty kick in the 99 at the Rose Bowl, was um, going to be my sister-in-law in the future. So I, <laughs> I think obviously have a real large connection to her and, and to U.S. soccer and to being a fan, but also, you know, being a family member and, and being able to watch her compete for our country and then obviously have a relationship with her now that she's family. So obviously really tied in into that group of, of women who re represented our country at such a high level and set, really set the standard for women's soccer. So I think, um, you know, lo love watching the success of the women this past year. And, you know, we obviously had a couple down years by U.S. standards. And so it's nice to see a new coach come in and, and really kind of set the standard high and then have the group achieve that standard this past year at the Olympics. As a soccer fan, what are you interested in? Because, I, you know, obviously there's a, a very large number of Americans that like, uh, you know, watching British or, or overseas soccer. Uh, do, do you watch college soccer? Do you watch what do you watch the men's national team? What what attracts you? Yeah, um, well, I watch a lot of college soccer, obviously, for, mm -hmm. for pleasure and for scouting. Um, my we're a big soccer family. So we watch a lot of the Premier League on Saturday and Sunday mornings when we can. We watch the Barclays women's uh, watch the Spanish men's and women's. I don't watch a lot of men's soccer outside of the Premier League or the Spanish League, but, um, you know, sometimes we'll go to the Loons and watch them. And, you know, I, I got to get out to a training session with Eric Ramsey and the Loons this year. He let me come out and observe. So that was really fun. I'm really just a soccer fan as a whole. I have a, a weird opinion about soccer, and that's I like women's soccer more than men's soccer because women don't flop. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes they do. Well, not as much and not as flamboyantly. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. I'll take a flop if you really need to draw the foul. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one last question for me. I'll get, hand it back to Don. Um, I know you've recruited out of state. I, you know, I've, I've spoken to some of your athletes from North Carolina, the East Coast. How do you pitch the University of Minnesota as a soccer destination? Yeah, well, you know, we have uh, wonderful resources that surround our student athletes at the University of Minnesota. So it's the opportunity to come to a wonderful public institution that has an urban feel, but also just the, the Big Ten green feel when you're on campus. The facility that we have at ELR, I think, is one of the best facilities in college soccer. I think... Uh, from the perspective of being a female student athlete at the University of Minnesota, I think we separate ourselves from other Big Ten schools, other SEC schools in, in how much our athletic department is committed to the female student athlete experience. Um, so I think really, really fortunate to be here. So we really pitch, you're coming here to get a, a really wonderful education a wonderful athletic experience, a wonderful social experience in one of the best cities in, in the country. So um, I don't, I, I think they come here and they feel the family environment that we have and the wonderful staff that we have at Minnesota and then our wonderful staff as an administration. And they really get a feel for what a wonderful experience they would have here. And because I went here and had that experience, I think it makes it unique talking about it. Well, Aaron, I was going to jump in and say, you know, University of Minnesota has always has always put an emphasis on their female athletes, you know, whether you, you look back at the hockey team, the basketball team, and now the soccer team is getting support again, because you guys got it when you won the won the championship. Have you seen recently an added spike now that and I don't want to say that, it, oh, now all eyes are on women, but there's really been this push, you know, in the country, especially this past year, um, to support women's sports. And have you have you seen uh, the needle being pushed at all? Oh, absolutely. And I, and I think, um, gosh, even if I think the last, I don't know what the attendance at the last Lynx game was, but I know that even from, you know, from a soccer perspective, but just a women's sports perspective, I think women are being recognized and people want to come watch women because it's good. And I think that's been really nice to see across all sports, really. But as you said, in particular, if you look at 
women's volleyball, women's softball, women's basketball, women's soccer. The numbers are just so incredible. And I think it's a whole new market for us to delve into in terms of generating revenue from women's sports and um, having that kind of close the gap between what, what men generate. Yeah, and I also want to give a shout out to a lot of the um, the dads that have, you know, I'm, I'm a girl dad, you know, that they fully embrace it because Jim and I on the show, um, one, of, one of our missions is that um, we really – want to celebrate the men who support the women's sports too. And I think there's been a rise in that, whether it's the male athletes at the U of M that go and support openly and on social media, the female athletes, I find that synergy to be amazing. Oh, absolutely. And I, and again, I think it's just a recognition of how valuable women's sports are and women's athletes and how important they are. And so I mean, obviously, I, I'm married and my husband's a huge supporter of women's sports. He grew up with watching his sister play and and now as we're able to support our daughters and he's able to support our team. And so certainly um, that support is awesome. And, and I hope it continues as we kind of grow and evolve as a country. Well, let, let me ask you here locally in Minnesota, once the Minnesota Aurora was formed, and I know you have one of your players that we know there, uh, Yelena Zabielich, that she played a couple of years now, maybe even three since the inception of the team. Um, it kind of filled a gap for a lot of these college athletes that didn't have really anything to do in the off season and kind of keep them playing and get them more experience. Um, well, and how do you like that, that finally some of these, these college athletes have these other venues to, to kind of go and even grow um, their skill set? Yeah, I think it's, it's wonderful because obviously we have the NWSL and um, but you know, not everyone can make those rosters. And so I think having something in between where players can still compete at a really high level in a wonderful environment that the Aurora obviously has created, I think it's wonderful. And, and now you're seeing some of those Aurora players are able to take the next step and, you know, either go into the NWSL or, um, go into the USL. And so I think it's it's a, a nice little bridge that we have created. And and also I know in talking to Yell, like she has a wonderful experience in the summer. The the games are sold out, incredible crowds. And so that environment is really fun for them to be able to experience as a female athlete. Yeah, I know some people that didn't even know about it started going to Minnesota Roar and they said, I'm hooked now. I'm going to go watch the Gophers play. You know, I'm going to go to ELR. I'm going to look it up on Google and figure out how to get there. So you're getting even more fans that kind of are like, this is just such a great experience. And I don't know why I had the blinders on. Sometimes people don't know what's right in front of them unless something else presents it to them. Have you seen like maybe an increase? Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I think again, like I, like we played St. Thomas this year and I know there's a couple players on St. Thomas and then yell from us. And so I know there were a lot of crossover Aurora fans that came to that game. And um, I know we did an Aurora night, I think at one of our games last year. And, and so it's, it's really nice to see them kind of, I don't know, develop in a, a love for, for soccer at the Aurora Games and then be able to say, hey, where, where else is great soccer being played and then get out to our field and, and support the Gophers? You know, my high school, I like to brag, we were, um, we had the Mua sisters um, come from my high school back in Massachusetts, Whitman Hanson Regional High School. Um, so we've always had a really strong women's, young girls uh, soccer program way back east. And so there's some other towns that I've lived in across the country that did not have a strong female system. So to come here and, and not only see your success, but to see the type of women that are on your team, I just want to give you kudos from someone who's come from a soccer background and to, and to see and get to some of the young women that are actually on your team and how they're performing. I just, I just want to say to you, congratulations. And I know the season's not over yet, but it's so fun to see you guys play. Oh, thank you. That's so nice. And, you know, I, again, I feel really lucky to be leading this group of women and they amaze us every day, whether it's something they accomplish on the field or off the field and, um, you know, I highlight one of our, our captains, Sophia Bowman, who right now is studying for the MCAT, who, who wow. last year finished as the the 
top GPA and all of the female athletes in our athletic department. And so she's this wonderful soccer player and she's an all big 10 player and she's out there leading our team every, every day, but she's also studying for the MCAT. She's going to be a wonderful doctor, hopefully a wonderful pro soccer player. So it's, it's incredible to see some of the things that these young women achieve on a daily basis. Well, I'm a champion for that. I really believe that um, sports, first of all, helps you organize your your time, you know, time management, um, helps you be successful. And of course, she has to be smart in order to be doing her MCATs and, and trying to go into that. But I just think all in all, sports just helps women. You see so many C-suite women now that, that have played sports, either growing up or in high school or in college, that it really gives women that empowerment and also skills for later in life, like teamwork, um, how to handle success in addition to handling failure. Because people don't sometimes don't realize that, that you have to learn how to humbly accept success and how to handle it mentally so that you just don't think you're the greatest thing and then fall down the cliff, right? I mean, there's, there's a lot of lessons you can learn from um, being an athlete as a woman. Oh, absolutely. And I think that resiliency and ability to bounce back is something that will set these athletes apart as they really kind of confront hard challenges in their life after they leave here. Well, Aaron, you are a joy. Your team is um, just fantastic. I know that you've got a huge game coming up. So I want everyone who's listening, the Michigan is the next game. It's Thursday. It's at home. And if you don't know what ELR is, it's Elizabeth Lyle Robbie Stadium. So put that into your Waze or your Google if you don't know how to get there and support uh, these women because this this season is fantastic. And I can't, I just can't wait to see where you guys end up, Aaron. You guys are just having a great year. Yeah, thank you so much for having us. And yeah, go Gophers. Yeah, go Gophers. I they're going to say like Sky Yama, roll the boat, go Gophers. <laughs> I always just go with the go Gophers. Yeah. That's just fine. <laughs> we'll, we'll leave the rest to PJ. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Aaron, thank you so much. And, uh, and good luck because you know what? 150, you may not have known it. It's just around the corner. Thanks. Thanks.